here in Los Angeles, there's a gay everything, you know, there's like gay groups for, for just about anything you can imagine. I've, I've actually been on the team since uh, the start of the season. Uh -huh. I had gone up to Vancouver, watched him compete in gay games up in 1990. Uh -huh. And that's about it. I've been to a couple of skate nights and it's encouraged to come out and join the team, and I did. I, I had basically never skated up until this last June. And I came out for the first practice with the team. And at that turnout, we found out that the first game was going to be the next day on Sunday. And the team said, come on out, just you know, go ahead and suit up and I didn't think I was going to be put on the ice. Turned out I played half the game. Um, couldn't stop, couldn't turn, but um, it, was, it was good. It's, it's tough to describe the feeling. I, I had never skated before. I never held a stick until the day before. And it just, it was a great feeling to be out there playing hockey. I've always wanted to play, and here I was. I was on the ice, and the team was supporting me in it. I probably got about $1,400 into the season so far in equipment. So need, Ice time, league fees, it, it, it's not fees. cheap. You, need, what else? What else do you, need? you got the skates, you got the pads, you got the shoulder pads, you got the jersey, you've got your league fees. League fees alone are 450 bucks per person to play in this league. Um, you've got practice time. It, it just it adds up. Um, the team has been real good. When I started out, all I bought were my own skates and the rest of the equipment the team had loaned me. Um, but it, it certainly does add up, and that's one of the things that you know, I, I personally have a little bit of trepidation about, is that it is, it does take money to play, and that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. We do have fundraisers you know, to try and offset some of our, the team expenses, but so far the team, as a team, hasn't funded individuals to play if they're short on cash. Individual team members have done that, and I, I do know of some cases where uh, individuals have helped with league fees, for instance, for, for guys who are you know, short on cash. But that is, unfortunately, part of the reality of hockey. This is my second season with Blades, and I got involved um, initially just kind of going to practices with them. Um, I had played hockey as a kid and didn't play again for like 15 years and then uh, had heard about them through an accountant who was working with me on a project and started going to games and then went to practices and then things went from there. I, I wasn't particularly shocked at it. I mean, I think kind of here in Los Angeles, there's a gay everything, you know, there's like gay groups for, for just about anything you can imagine. Um, so I wasn't particularly shocked, um, but I was excited at the fact that, you know, I could get involved in a sport without having to feel like uh, I needed to, to, you know, play into the uh, typical heterosexual role that kind of sometimes gets associated with playing on a sports team. You know, that I wouldn't have to feel like I was playing on it with a group of people where I had to be inhibited about the fact that I wasn't talking about somebody's hooters somewhere, you know. Hockey is a very emotional sport. It's a lot of physical contact and people get upset. It is a game that uh, is very, very prone to outbursts of emotion.
through the door. I hadn't played hockey in quite a while. I'd done some pickup games in the previous couple years. Um, I was interested in playing again because I love this sport. And I had been living in Sacramento at the time, and they weren't that organized, and it was a fairly um, a small hockey, uh, hockey group, and it was fairly homophobic from just my involvement in it, so I wasn't that interested in playing. I was playing pickup a little bit here and there. I had played as, as a, a bantam, uh, 14, 15, 16 years of age and was really uh, looking forward to getting back involved in the game. Uh, my initial reaction was, I'm going to get a lot of ice time <laughs> because the first game I saw, it was like watching little peewees and squirts. It was really a lot of fun watching. The first game I saw was a blowout. Um, and we're experiencing some of those this year, too. Uh, so <laughs> it's like uh, coming back around in a circle. But um, I knew from that that it was, um, it was more of just an interest in playing. And it, the, the notion of winning would be, would be great to do, but it wasn't uppermost in what people's uh, minds were. It was playing. about the fact that, that we were playing essentially straight teams because I think the reality is that to most of those people um, there was a sense of respect even though we get uh, some uh, comments uh, from time to time from people there is a certain sense from people of kind of disbelief that number one there could be such a thing as a gay hockey team um, and, and the reality is we aren't a purely gay team. We have some straight people who play with us. You know, we don't advertise who is who because our thing is who cares. Um, so, I mean, in terms of playing the game, my thing is just to go out there and play the game. Like one of the last games we played, the other team used some words that they probably shouldn't have. Someone screaming out "faggot" or "cocksucker" or something. It shouldn't matter what our sexuality is on the ice. I didn't use quite those words, but mm -hmm. basically said, look, we're having a whole lot of fun, and let's just play hockey mm -hmm. and leave out the name calling. And the guy said he would go talk with his team mm -hmm. and, and let them know that they don't want that to happen again. I think there's a lot of nuance of that, where we might be sitting... Uh, next to the other team uh, in the locker room. I mean, not in separate locker rooms, but there's only a piece of plywood between us, so we can hear everything that's being said right. and hear them say, oh, let's go out and beat the faggots or, you know, mm -hmm. this is going to be an easy game, blah, blah, blah. We go out and win the game. Mm -hmm. And so just in that process, seeing these people, uh, hearing what they say beforehand and then seeing them afterwards, kind of, there's a kind of a, a respect there that's like, you know, okay, it wasn't the stereotype we thought it was going to be. You know, you kind of just have to, you know, blow it off. I mean, it, it's, it's in the heat of the game. And uh, we've had times when people after the game have said, hey, you know, I'm sorry that I blew up. Or someone else on the team will say, uh, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, the jerk, you know, said something. But, um, you know, it's a very high emotional game. and. Uh, we don't like it, but it happens, and, you know, the best you can do is go out there and try to win the game. Well, we have, from other teams, in past years, we have had some nasty incidents, name-calling and, and stuff like that, 
And one team in particular sent us a letter after the game saying that there are some nasty elements on the, our team, meaning the other team, mm -hmm. and we're trying to let them know that we don't want to have this happen again, and we apologize for our behavior, and we look forward to playing you in our next game, and we hope it's uh, more pleasant than the past one was. Mm -hmm. And and we thought that was kind of neat. We thought that took a lot of... Uh, of class, I guess, to, to say we have a problem and we just want to play ice hockey. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're there for. And, and there have been people who, before a game, I remember one, one guy, we were in the same locker room with the other team because we were at a facility that didn't have separate locker rooms. And he came over to us and said, you know, I, I'm kind of hearing hearsay that you guys are a gay team. And, you know, I mean, that, that's not true, is it? And we kind of said, well, yeah, most of us are gay. Um, and at that time, we had a, a woman playing with us as well, and, and uh, a couple of straight people were playing with us. But you know, um, we, so we told him that, and he kind of said, you know, he kind of wanted to know well, who was who, and it was like, you know, what does it matter? We all play hockey, and uh, he kind of couldn't quite believe that. And I remember after the game, he was like really, you know, really made an effort to to say thanks for the game, and you know, I think that that. In that sense, I kind of I think you kind of see that people are sort of changed. Well, I gay, being gay is political. Mm -hmm. I'm just making the statement that you're gay is being political. Um, we are just as a gay group political in a sense. The members are are very I would say apolitical um, when it comes to the blades. Um, I don't you know I don't think that's inappropriate. I don't think that necessarily we need to be more political. I think what we, we're doing is, is great. Um, we are out there to straight people. Some of their first encounters with openly gay men and women and just being out there to play a game and not trying to over politicize the uh, the event is, I think, helpful to what our goals are. Mm -hmm. Friends are pretty supportive of what you do. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I think um, I think a lot of the gay community is very supportive of um, of hockey. You know that they're you know the blades that there's an an out group uh, and being involved in a in a quote straight league. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of support there. Gay Games was great. Gay Games was an amazing experience, not just because we could, um, for the first time, be playing other uh, gay teams, um, but just in terms of the whole spirit that was there. I mean, the, the, to walk into a stadium with you know thousands of other athletes and have thousands of people up in the stadium and know that that whole event was a gay event and what was being celebrated was was kind of the antithesis of the, the stereotype for gays and le lesbians. To travel and play a number of games in a week in an atmosphere of uh, lesbians, bisexuals, and gays was, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. To be in the opening ceremonies where there are thousands of gay-friendly and gay and lesbian and bisexual people was just a, a very, very emotional experience for me. And marching in with all these people clapping and screaming and hollering, uh, it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you.
I had been playing with the Blades approximately a year. We went through the one complete season, which we got second place at, mm -hmm. and then we continued practicing after our playoffs with an eye toward Vancouver. And we got to Vancouver, uh, attended the opening ceremony, just this incredible outpouring of support for all the athletes there. And we went in, we wanted to get to the finals, we got to the finals, we played a team from Seattle in the finals who had beat us prior, and we ended up tying the game in the finals for the gold, the winner gets the gold, the loser gets the silver. And the organizers had not scheduled enough time to let us go into overtime and play it off. So we tie the finals 1-1 and we get the silver medal because the tie break says Seattle got more goals than we did throughout the tournament and so they get the gold medal. Oh, it was great. I was only up there for about two days. Um, spent the night on the floor of, of uh, a friend of mine and his boyfriend and two of their lesbian friends shared a four or two bedroom and I was on the floor for the night. But the actual experience of Vancouver was phenomenal. And it was kind of funny because I've been up at the Goodwill Games in Seattle the week before. And Seattle spent about 30, somewhere between 30 and 50 million dollars to bring Goodwill Games to Seattle in anticipation of all the hotel revenue and TV revenue and everything that that was going to mean for the city. Turns out that nobody showed up. Meanwhile, one week later up in Vancouver, where the city of Vancouver basically had been asked, would you mind if the gay games came to your city? Their response was basically, well, if you want to come, feel free and we'll do what we can to support you. Every hotel up there was booked for about a 30 mile radius. Every restaurant had about a half an hour wait to get in. The streets were full of people, there were banners. I mean, the city was alive, Seattle was dead. And, and that's part of the excitement of gay games, is that it envelops everybody, whether you're a participant, whether you're playing darts or bowling or hockey or football. There's an entire aura of the entire games that it's just, it sweeps you up and it's great. And everyone up there is just being themselves.